As the Democratic Alliance, we understand the fact that our society is broken. Our society is fragmented on many levels. What uh, the comments that were made by the judge are certainly not welcome in South Africa. Therefore, even our member of parliament, Janice Breitenbach, has already reported that matter to the Judicial Services Commission because we want that matter to be investigated. Janssen has defended her post on Twitter saying her confidential comments have been taken out of context. She said it started when she tried to find help for the victims of rape and assault cases she hears. Well, to discuss this, we're now joined by retired High Court Judge Chris Greenland. Thank you very much for joining us. Always a pleasure to have you. Um, and a very fascinating case uh, about judges, judiciary as human beings with a private life and private ideals. Your mm -hmm. first thoughts when you heard about this case? Well, I, it was brought to my attention on social media and I read what appeared to be a Facebook post uh, in the name of Mabel Janssen, who I assume mm. is the judge in question. But as a judge, I don't conclude that mm. without evidence. Mm. But for the purpose of this conversation, I'll assume that this ref was posted by Judge Mabel Janssen and my immediate reaction was to be taken aback. In fact, I was quite shocked. And as I read uh, the conversation and read her defense, her purported defense of the stance that she had taken, I became rather horrified mm. uh, that uh, this could be the thinking of a superior court judge of this country. Uh, because uh, she was passing judgment in the public domain on a whole race or ethnic group. Judges don't do that. Mm. Judges only pass judgment on other humans in court, on evidence. Okay. Uh, otherwise they lead what we call lonely lives. Um, in terms of which mm. they steer clear of politics, they steer clear of anything controversial uh, for the reason that to indulge yourself in that uh, exposes mm. the judiciary uh, to being brought into disrepute. Okay. I'm going to hurry us along a little bit just because we, we yeah. push for time, but yeah. when a judge is appointed, um, they go through a process of uh, deciding whether they're a fit and proper person to take up the chair as a, as a judge. Supposedly. Supposedly, yes. right. Now, given that and what you've seen, yeah. would it be, I mean, could we say that she's still fit and proper? And what would be the appropriate action in response to this? It's quite clear that the stance as evidenced on Facebook calls her suitability as a judge seriously into question. It also raises a charge of bringing the administration of justice in, into disrepute. Those two are indicated on a prima facie uh, basis. And it means that the Judicial Service Commission is obliged under the Constitution to subject her to the procedure mm. uh, to test whether she should remain as a judge or not. Does that mean that judges can't have private views? Yes, you can have private views, but as I said, you lead a very lonely life. You keep them to yourself, and at best you discuss them with other judges mm. and your wife. Are her previous judgment, judgments uh, perhaps unsafe now, given what's come out now? Not necessarily, because uh, you would have to examine those, each of those judgments on their own merits. What what is indicated is that she does not have the culture of the judge, the mm. fundamental culture of a judge, to approach issues mm. without fear, favor, or mm. prejudice, especially that last mm. one, prejudice. Her statement about black people can be equated to Donald Trump's statement about Mexicans and Muslims. Mm. That is what politicians say, not judges. Mm. Is it possible to be, have prejudicial personal views 
but be a fair judge at the same time. Absolutely. Uh, uh, Peter, it's politi politically correct to pretend that other groups, mm. other race groups, other ethnic groups, other tri tribal groups are the only ones that are prejudiced. My stance is that we, we are all prejudices. We all have natural prejudices. My Ndebele grandmother did not regard mm. any other grouping at the same level and deserving of the sa same mm. esteem or respect as Ndebele people. She only regarded as Zulus as mm. deserving of that. So that was the prejudice. Mm. We've, we've all got these prejudices, but we have mm. to be careful that the prejudice does not translate into bigotry. And when you classify a whole group of people as, and judge them in that way, it's like saying mm. that because there are some Islamic terrorists, mm. all Muslims are, mm. are terrorists. That's bigotry. So if you're going to mm. say that because some black people rape and sexually molest, mm. all black people have that culture, that is bigotry. Okay. Um, should she go? <laughs> Uh, that depends entirely on uh, the adjudication process that now must be uh, implemented in terms of the Constitution. All right. Judge Green, I'm going to have to leave it there, unfortunately. These are always too brief. <laughs> but thank you very much indeed for your powerful insights. Uh, thank you, Peter. All right. Okay. Uh, so that was a retired judge.